Two accomplished black men found themselves in a shocking predicament when they were pulled over and arrested without any apparent cause. As the officers unraveled the truth about their identities, the gravity of their mistake became painfully clear, setting off a chain of events that would alter their lives forever. This is a story about justice, misunderstanding, and the importance of dialogue. Welcome back to Anecdote Odyssey, a place where we explore humanity through personal stories by converting journeys into collections of interesting personal stories. It was a serene night, the type where the distant hum of streetlights and the occasional sound of passing cars were the only interruptions to the tranquility. Marcus Taylor was behind the wheel, driving home with his close friend, Darius, after a successful evening out at a social gathering. As they navigated the quiet streets, the air was thick with unspoken thoughts, both men reflecting on the evening's events. Suddenly, Marcus caught sight of flashing blue lights in his rearview mirror. A police car was closely trailing them, its lights spinning in the night. Why are they pulling us over? Darius asked, confusion etched on his face. We haven't done anything wrong, Marcus replied, bewildered as he guided the car to the roadside. He exhaled deeply, feeling the weight of the uncertainty that lay ahead. Despite his accomplishments and respect in the community, Marcus understood all too well the trepidation that came with being a black man in America, especially during encounters with law enforcement. Two young officers approached the vehicle. Officer Riley, the more junior of the duo, arrived first at Marcus's window. His expression was stern, and his body language exuded hostility. License and registration, he barked, forgoing any pleasantries or explanations about the stop. Marcus, maintaining his composure, handed over his identification and registration. Is there a problem, officer? He inquired, attempting to defuse the growing tension. Officer Riley barely glanced at the ID before turning his attention to Darius. You too, he snapped, gesturing for Darius's identification. Darius hesitated for a brief moment, sensing the unfairness of the situation but understanding the need to comply. He reluctantly handed over his ID, his brow furrowing with concern. Marcus watched Officer Riley closely, observing the young officer's tense shoulders and sharp demeanor. This wasn't just a routine traffic stop. It felt like something deeper was at play. After a brief inspection of their IDs, Riley exchanged a look with his partner, Officer Grant. There was no sign of recognition from them regarding Marcus's high status no understanding that they were confronting their superior officer. Instead, Riley took a step back, whispering something to Grant, who nodded in response. Step out of the vehicle, Riley commanded, his tone authoritative, sending a surge of apprehension through Marcus's chest. Step out, Marcus echoed, striving to keep his voice steady despite the rising unease within. Can you tell me why we were pulled over? You're acting suspiciously, Riley replied sharply, reaching for his handcuffs. Don't make this harder than it has to be. Darius glanced at Marcus, worry flashing in his eyes. This isn't right, he muttered under his breath. Yet Marcus recognized the futility of arguing in such a volatile situation. Without protest, he opened the car door and stepped out, Darius following suit. In mere moments, both men found themselves handcuffed, Standing under the harsh glow of the police car's lights, the once quiet night now thick with the weight of injustice, the officers retreated to their patrol vehicle, leaving Marcus and Darius in the cold air, handcuffed and bewildered. Minutes passed, feeling like hours, as the flashing lights illuminated their faces, and passing cars slowed to gawk, curious about the scene unfolding before them. Leaning toward Darius, Marcus whispered, what do you think this is all about? We didn't do anything wrong. His frustration was barely concealed. Darius shook his head, equally baffled but more openly frustrated. I have no clue, man, but it feels like they're fishing for something. Just as Darius finished speaking, Officer Riley returned, wearing a hardened expression. His narrowed gaze fixated on both men as he barked, step out of the vehicle, now. His hand hovered near his holster, as if anticipating a confrontation. Sensing the situation escalating, Marcus remained calm, 
though the gravity of the moment was beginning to press down on him. Without an explanation, both men stepped away from the car, their movements deliberate and cautious to avoid any sudden gestures. Can you please tell us what this is about, officer? Marcus asked, striving to maintain composure, though disbelief crept into his tone. Suspicious behavior, Riley replied flatly, dismissing Marcus's inquiry as if it was the sole justification for their treatment. Without allowing any chance for dialogue, Riley produced handcuffs and began securing Marcus's wrists, while Officer Grant mirrored the action with Darius. Darius looked at Marcus, disbelief written all over his face. Suspicious? We haven't done anything, he protested, but his words fell on deaf ears. The sting of humiliation cut deep as their wrists were cuffed, their dignity stripped away in full view of passing motorists. Both men were guided toward the police car, their hearts pounding in tandem as curious onlookers slowed to observe the unfolding drama. This was not just another routine stop. This was a moment that stripped two respected men of their identities, reducing them to mere stereotypes. The weight of helplessness began to settle heavily on Marcus's shoulders. He was acutely aware of the reasons for their treatment, the color of their skin, but knowing this truth did little to ease the pain of the moment. Standing there, handcuffed under the flashing lights, both men wrestled with whether to speak out more, risking further escalation, or to remain silent, hoping for a resolution. The frustration, fear, and anger were almost unbearable. Then, a subtle shift occurred. Officer Grant, standing a few paces away, began to feel an unease deep within. Something about the situation felt off. He walked back to the patrol vehicle and decided to run Marcus's ID through the police database. As the results populated on the screen, his heart raced. His eyes widened in shock, and he quickly glanced back at Marcus, still handcuffed by the roadside. Officer Grant rushed over to Officer Riley, whispering urgently, Do you know who that is? Riley, initially confused, shook his head. No, who cares? They fit the description. That's Captain Marcus Taylor, Grant said, barely keeping his voice above a whisper. He's a high-ranking officer, our superior. The color drained from Riley's face as the weight of his error sank in. His grip tightened on his flashlight as he froze momentarily, stunned by the implications of what they had done. He quickly gestured to Grant, and together they hurried back to Marcus and Darius, fumbling to remove their handcuffs. Sir, we didn't know. Officer Grant stammered as he unlocked Marcus's cuffs. Captain Taylor, I'm so sorry. There's been a misunderstanding. Now free, Marcus rubbed his wrists and regarded the officers with a calm yet piercing stare. Disappointment radiated from him, cutting through the night more sharply than any angry outburst could. That's the problem, Marcus began slowly, his voice calm but authoritative. You didn't ask. Officer Riley stood speechless his pale face betraying the realization of their blunder. Darius stepped forward, now uncuffed as well. If this is how you treat someone like him, he gestured toward Marcus, how do you treat the rest of us? Backup officers, who had arrived prepared for conflict, now stood awkwardly, shifting uncomfortably. They had anticipated trouble but were instead confronted with the reality of nearly arresting one of their own leaders, all based on an assumption. As Marcus and Darius turned to walk back to their car, Marcus paused and glanced over his shoulder at Officer Riley and Grant, both frozen in their guilt. You need to reflect on why you treated us like this, he said, his voice steady yet firm. This isn't just about me. It's about every person who's been judged before they're even heard. With that, Marcus and Darius climbed back into the car, leaving the officers in stunned silence the flashing lights casting long shadows across the deserted street. The following day, news of the incident spread like wildfire through the police department. Officers whispered about the near-disaster Riley and Grant had created and the shock of treating a respected captain like a mere suspect. Officer Riley faced disciplinary action, while Marcus took it upon himself to lead a meeting focused on addressing racial profiling forcing the department to confront the uncomfortable truths that had led to the incident. Later that evening, as Marcus and Darius reflected on the night's events, a sense of resolution washed over them. 
Despite his rank, Marcus recognized that he was not immune to the injustices faced by so many others on a daily basis. This isn't over, he stated softly but firmly, a determination in his voice. We have more work to do. Darius nodded in agreement. We do. No one should have to endure what we just went through. Shaken but resolute, they vowed to continue their fight for change, fully aware that their work was far from finished. Did you enjoy this powerful story? Be sure to subscribe for more thought-provoking content and narratives that encourage reflection. And don't forget to comment below to let us know where you're watching from. We'd love to hear from you.